Imperative forms in German language is practically the way, the option, how do we give comments to somebody? How do we give very briefly requests? Keep in mind the imperative voice, uh, the imperative forms, it's not like regular forms uh, of verbs in the German language because they do not give any information. Like we do not use those, such forms when we describe what is happening outside, what is happening around us. We use such forms only for some specific one, for a specific purpose. We use these forms to give comments, to tell to somebody what to do. Okay, but we have to know them, and um, unlike, uh, not like in English, in German we have many different forms, and we have to be make, to be clear why do we have so many forms, and in which situation when do we have to use specific forms. So imperative comments do something. Sit, like what we can tell to our dog. And in German language, we have four different forms of imperative of comments. It's such called Z imperative. Z is capitalized, as you see, via imperative, ia imperative, and do imperative. Okay, so what is the difference? And why do we need to use four different forms to give comment or request? Let's analyze all of them first. So you remember, guys, that everything around us may be in singular form or in plural form. Even you may be in plural form if you if you look at the window, uh, the uh, mirror, you see yourself in the mirror so that means you may be two of you né? so and the first person singular form is you so me ich so ich form now ask yourself can you give comment to yourself can you comment i mean you can do it you can always say do it but as long as you start to give comments to yourself you will say you you will say do né? you do it you will talk to yourself using the uh, form you my friend you so that's why it's impossible to give comments in first person singular okay so what is the plural uh, form of first person so first person plural many me will be via we all together can we give comments to many of us i think yes you can you can say always guys let's do it let's go so that means you include yourself in the group and you give comment to all people or members of this group. So that means we can give comments to via in via form and call it via imperative. So once again, we use via imperative when we talk to many people, we give some kind of comment and we include ourselves. So we will are going to do the same, okay? Next is in singular, second person singular, is personal pronoun do. Obviously, of course, we can give comments to one of our friends saying, hey, come to me or give me please your book or give me your cell phone. You know, those are absolutely, those comments are absolutely possible. So we can do it with do and we call it do imperative. Okay, what is the next? Ear, you guys, so many uh, your friends. Can you give comment to many of your friends? Of course, we can give comments. We can say, hey, guys, uh, please go please go away or please go home, please do your homework. So you can talk to many of your friends to give them a comment, but you will not include yourself. You give, will give comment only to them and we call it ear imperative, okay? And last uh, option is when we use formal language, we say, sir, ma'am, ladies and gentlemen, can you please do it? Please do it. Please come. Please arrive. Please forget. It. Please don't be so nervous. So we can talk. We can ask one person or many people to do something. And we will use Z capitalized when we will write our request on paper. So we call it Z imperative. So formal language imperative. It, it applies to singular forms and plural forms to the same form. So we have four different forms. What's about the third person singular and plural? He or she or they? Well, if you talk about a person, let's say you talk about your best friend no? and you say he, he, he. So my best friend is Michael and he is very smart. As long as you turn to Michael and you will give Michael a comment, you will switch to do imperative. You will say you, my friend, do it, you see? And as long as you talk about many people saying they, so you see this group there, 
partner so you talk about them as long as you turn to this group and you will ask them to do something you will use formal you ladies and gentlemen imperative or informal you guys can you please do it please go away you see so that means in third person singular and in third person plural it is impossible to give comments with still will be used do or ear or Z imperative, okay? So as you see, four different forms, analyze them. And let's start with the imperative because it's the most easiest uh, uh, form, how to create um, comments and requests. Let's imagine we want to talk to this old professor and what we want to say, we want to say, we want to use the verb repeat. We just want to ask this professor, um, uh, professor, please repeat it. Now we give this request. So how do we use it? We know that the verb repeat in German is wiederholen. So we check in our dictionary, we found this verb, and look how we're going to do this. We will just take this verb and we will say please. Now, and what is important, we will give additional element Z. When we write this request, we will capitalize Z. So this is our polite request. Sir, Please repeat it. So, wiederholen Sie bitte. So, what is here important? We start our request with our verb. So, verb will be now in the first grammatical position. Then we will we must use this Z uh, personal pronoun always. It's some kind of gesture of politeness. No? Z, wiederholen Sie. And if you want, you can use bitte. So now question sometimes arises, so what is the right position for this bitte? I would say you can place bitte almost in every, everywhere, but do not separate wiederholen and z. Do not place bitte between. So you may start with bitte saying bitte, wiederholen z. Or you may finish with bitte saying wiederholen z, bitte. Okay? Keep in mind, you use some kind of uh, intonation which is intonation which is uh, requesting something you know it's some kind of emphasis em emphasizing the verb wiederholen sie bitte no? so in this way in this way you will not confuse your request with yes or no question no? sprechen sie deutsch you know this will be rising intonation as you see positions of words are the same the only one difference is that in question you put the question mark at the end and here we have a request. No? So the Z imperative is pretty easy to use. Just use your verb. And of course, if you have a separable prefix, you have to separate your prefix and use it at the end of your request. There is only one verb I just ask you to memorize. It has specific form, and we use this form practically only for this reason, when we give request or comment. This is the verb to be. If you want to ask somebody, please be, and you use formal language, you use specific form Zion. So we put, as you see, we put additional A, Zion, Zion. For example, Zion Zinet Bitte, please be nice. No? Okay, next form is Wir imperative. Wir, you remember, you include yourself, you tell to, to yourself or to many other people. At the same time, guys, let's do something. No? How do you use it? Let's say, for example, we say, let's watch TV. Let's watch television. So we use the verb sehen in German means to watch, to watch TV. And how do we create our imperative? Look, we take, just take the verb, we put it at the beginning, and then we use wir. And that is our comment. Sehen wir. So let's watch it. Sehen wir einen Film. Let's watch a movie. Sehen wir einen Film. Again, keep in mind there is one exception. There is one verb which will have specific form and this verb is the verb to be. So, for example, we say, guys, let's be healthy. Seien wir gesund. So, please memorize the Zion form. So, we use it specifically for um, purpose to give comments or requests. Eo imperative. This is a little bit more challenging part, but still it, it is logical. It has specific logic inside. We have just to understand the logic. So, for example, we want to give a comment to many people we address with the first names, like our closest friends. You know, we use the first names. And what we'll, we want to ask, guys, go. Just go. Okay, so you may go. So go. This is common. We use the verb gehen. Now let's remember. 
let's recall how can we conjugate the verb gain? So how do we create this subject plus verb agreement? So remember, you remember this, now you know this. Ich gehe, du gehst. Er oder sie geht. Wir gehen, ihr geht und sie gehen. So this is the classical example of a conjugation so we just use the stem of the verb and we put specific endings so you remember this you know this so what we are going to do we take this form from the second person plural uh, position of the verb from conjugation and we use it as our comment and believe me or not this is our comment nothing else gate we don't say ear we don't use ear we just use the verb itself okay this is now a common gate as you see it's the same the same form it works for any verbs for all verbs in german language just before you create such form think what is the conjugated form of the verb second person plural take it use it don't put uh, ear at the end you may use bit at the end it's always like polite to say bit please no? okay uh, and you know, look, soldiers, they will accept the comment. And then we go to the most toughest, to the most difficult part of um, way how to give comments. And this is do imperative. Okay, there is only one, your friend or somebody you would like to use informal language. What we are going to ask, we're going to ask go. Okay, again, please go, my friend, go. So again, let's talk about conjugation. Ich gehe. Du gehst, er geht, wir gehen, ihr geht, sie gehen. Now, we take a look at the form of the verb which we use with do. Now, because you talk to somebody using do. So, this is the stem of the verb. You see stem plus ending st. st no? So, what we are going to do to be able to give a comment, we just will take the stem. We leave st, but we take the stem of this form, and this will be our comment. G. You see, very short. It's almost like g, but this is the comment we give to our one, our friend. Okay. And if you want to negate your comment, you put nicht after your verb. Don't go. G nicht. Okay. So this is how do we do with uh, verbs in do imperative form. Sometimes we may use negations kind as well. And we can even uh, use kind with different endings. For example, don't make a fuss. Mach kein Theater. This is an idiomatical expression. But look, in this case, we use comment with negation kein. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at some very unusual specific cases we talk about do imperative again imagine there is a book and what do you do with the book you read the book so you use infinitive lesen lesen means to read how do you use the verb lesen in the second person singular form saying you read the book you use you my friend a personal pronoun do you will say do least das Buch. You remember, this is the verb which such called a change of vowel in the stem form. So if when you use do, you have to change your verb. And you use another uh, vowel. You use dive tongue e, long e, e, e. Du liest das Buch. Okay? So in this case, uh, we do not put double s at the end. We just put t because the stem of the verb ends uh, by uh, uh, consonant s, so that's why we combine it in one s. Least, you know, we use st as part of the stem plus t and uh, ending st. Now, what we are going to do for our comment, if you give comment to read the book, we take this form. So we have to keep in mind, as long as you have such verbs with stem vowel change, you know, we have to take the uh, stem from this form and use it as our comment. Lis das Buch. Look, we use, still use S at the end because this is part of the stem of the verb. Lesen. Yeah, that's why we don't drop it. 
lease that spoon. In other examples, uh, just how do we say I take pencil? We use the verb nehmen. But how do you say you take pencil? You take pencil. So you say du nimmst den Bleistift. Look, we again we change the verb. Now we use e instead of a in the stem. We use nimmst, ne? and we take the stem from do form, and we use it as our command. Nim, take, nim den Bleistift. So it works only, so this specific forms, only when our verb will have change of vowels from a to e short, like in the second example, or from a to dive tongue e long, so e a. You see the both examples. For all other verbs with stem vowel changes, you just use the stem of infinitive. For example, for example, the verb fahren. Now you remember how do we say fahren with do? Do fast. We change R to E, but we don't take this form for command. We just use the form of infinity. We say far. No? Good. And sometimes we use our verbs in do form and we have to put additional A just for better pronunciation. Look, for example, the verb antworten, to answer. If you say you answers, correct, your answer is correct, you answer uh, correctly, you will put additional A between T and ST just for better pronunciation. Do antwort test. You see? If you use the stem for your comment, you keep this A at the end. So your comment will be antworte, bitte. You see, you keep the A. And there is one verb again, and this is the verb to be, when I just ask you memorize the form. It's, it, this verb has specific form for do, common, for do imperative. So how do you say you are, talking to one, our friend? We say du bist, for example, du bist kreativ. Forget about this if you want to give comment. It will not work. We have specific form, and this form is sei. We use this sei only to, for a purpose to give comments to one our friend. Just memorize it. For example, in this example, we say sei gesund, be healthy. 